with Jesus. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Uh, today's message is on the Good Shepherd. I believe this message is going to bless you. I believe it's going to uplift you. Uh, before we do, share this message. Share it with somebody. Uh, somebody needs to hear this. Amen. And we're still on our Parables with Jesus series. All right. And, and, and this is number six. All right. And, and, and I'm, I'm so excited. This is the Good Shepherd. This is the Good Shepherd. So tune in, watch this, and, and, and like always, if you have any prayer requests, anything, any, any comments, comment on this, on this video, go to my website, watch the other ones, all right? It's davidgomezministries.com, and, and, and just bless other people by sharing it with them. I believe it's going to bless them, amen? But before we do, let us pray, amen? Dear God, we just want to thank you this morning, Lord God. We want to honor you. We want to praise your holy name, Lord God. We want to worship with you, Lord God. We want to step into your presence this morning, Lord God, and hear a word straight from you, Lord God. So open up our ears, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, and our souls, Lord God, to be able to receive whatever blessings you have for us, whatever knowledge, whatever wisdom, whatever word that's going to impact our lives, Lord God whatever healing and miracles that you may have for us, Lord God. We want to receive from you, Lord God. So we thank you this morning. We honor you. We praise you. And Lord, let us have a great time in this message. In your precious name, amen. I am excited. So we're going to John chapter 10, verse 1. Okay? John chapter 10, verse 1. And it says this, this is Jesus talking, all right? Jesus is talking right now. Watch this. Most assuredly, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the, sheep, the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by, by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will, be, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus, right now, in this verse is pointing out that the sheep only listen to their master, to their shepherd. The sheep don't listen to anybody else's voice. So when a shepherd calls them, they come running. When somebody else that is not their shepherd calls them, they do not come. Jesus is saying, I am the good shepherd. He's saying, I am the shepherd. When I call, you hear my voice. Amen. My sheep know me. So Jesus is pointing out he is the true and real shepherd. All right. And I like to use the New King James Version because it says the door. And we're going to get to that in a second. I'm excited. I'm getting ahead of myself. Watch this. Jesus. Now, you can probably go on YouTube and find this. Okay. You can go on there and, 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 and put on a, a shepherd calling a sheep. All right? And there's been studies, they've done studies and videos where the shepherd, uh, 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 somebody else calls the sheep and they don't come. They're out in the field in the pasture and they don't come. But when the shepherd calls them, they come running. Okay? So Jesus is saying, I am the true, I am the real shepherd. If you are my sheep, when I call, you listen, you come, you hear my advice, you hear my words, these are my words. When I call, when, when you read these words, you listen to them, all right? So that was part of another video uh, last week. You hear God's voice. Not everybody else's advice, not everybody else's voice, but God's voice. Amen? So that was point one. Let's go to John 10, verse 7. We're going to keep on going. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door 
of the sheep. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pastures. Amen, amen. Jesus right here is saying, I am the door. So first he points out he is the good shepherd. Now he is saying he is the door. Jesus is pointing out that he is the only way to salvation. Jesus is pointing out that he is the only way to heaven. Jesus is pointing out that he is the only way, the door to God's promises. To God's promises and blessings for your life. You can't go any other way. You can't go any other, any other door. You cannot enter through any other door and get to those. See, you cannot go through any other religion that doesn't point through Jesus. Jesus is saying, I am the true religion. I am the true way to, G to God, the Father. He is the door. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. See, if you are part of his flock, if you are part of his children, you go through the door. Just like you have a home, just like I have a home, and my kids, they can come in and out out of, out of the pasture, right? It says they will go in and out and find pasture. Okay, my kids can go in and out of my house without knocking, without asking for permission. It is, they, they go through the door. Now a stranger cannot go in through the door. They have to knock, they have to ring the doorbell. Nowadays, they got to text or call because we probably won't answer the door, right? If a door rings and you're like, nobody was coming, what? Did I get a text? No, nothing. I'm not answering that, right? That's today's society. So, but Jesus is saying he is the door, see? And it says in and out of pastures. What does that mean? In and out, in and out. Jesus is the door to the presence of God. When we worship, when we praise God, we're going in into the presence of God, in into your blessings, and into the miracles, and into salvation, amen? You can go in and out because if we stayed in God's presence all day, we could not do anything else, amen? That doesn't mean God's presence is not with you. That's a whole different, whole different thing, and we'll get to that. But Jesus is saying he is the door. He is the only way. Everybody else that comes through, through, through a different way, they are thieves, they are robbers, they are not the true shepherd. Jesus is saying he's the only way to salvation. He's the only way to heaven. A lot of people out there believe that there is many ways to get to heaven. There isn't. Jesus is saying he is the only way. If somebody tells you different, they are thieves, they are liars, they are robbers. Amen? That's what it says. Ah, I wish I could stay on there, but I got, I got to keep on going. I got to keep on moving, okay? There's so much in this. There is so much. John 10, verse 10. Watch this. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd... One who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. See, Jesus is the true shepherd. Jesus points out here that anyone else flees 
But Jesus says he is the true shepherd. Jesus is pointing out here that there is a thief, a wolf, that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. See, Jesus did not promise you that you wouldn't have trials. Jesus did not promise you that you wouldn't have attacks in your life. Jesus did not promise you that there wouldn't be attacks on your life and, 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 and heartaches and trouble and, and all this chaos and all these things that almost take you out. He didn't promise you that. As a matter of fact, he is telling you right now, those things will come. See, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But what did Jesus say? He said, but I come that, I may, that you may have life and life more abundantly. So he's telling you, the thief is coming. There is a thief out there. Be aware of the thief. Be on the lookout of the thief because there's a thief coming. See, he warns you that there is a thief out there. Who is the thief? Who is the wolf? Satan, the devil. He is a thief. And it says here, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. How does it do that? Well, when he steals your joy. See, when he steals your joy, then he can kill your dreams. And when he kills your dreams, he can destroy your life. Hmm. I don't think you got that. I don't think you got that. See, if he steals your joy, where does your joy come from? The joy, your joy doesn't come from the world. It doesn't come from money. It doesn't come from people. It, it, it comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen? So your joy should always come from God, from the shepherd, from Jesus Christ. See, when people, when, when people lose their joy, they become depressed. They become sad. When they become sad and depressed, if, if you can keep them sad and depressed, then guess what? They begin to lose their dreams, their visions. And then what do they do? They isolate from other people. When they isolate, when a wolf can get the sheep isolated from the rest of the pack, then it can destroy it. I hope you're hearing this. Thank you, Jesus. See, somebody right now needs to get their joy from the Lord. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how many people did you wrong. I don't care if the whole world is against you. Jesus is there for you. Turn to the good shepherd, amen? Get your joy. Let God reveal your dreams. And accomplish those dreams and visions. Amen? Don't let the, don't let the enemy come. See, when, when, when Jesus is saying, a thief is coming. When you know a thief is coming, then you get prepared. Amen? You get prepared. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you're getting this. I hope you're getting this. See, uh, 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 a job of a wolf is to isolate the sheep, to scatter the sheep. If he can scatter and isolate the sheep, he can devour the sheep one by one. I hope you're getting this, man. I hope you're getting this. Let's go to John 10, verse 14. Watch this. John 10, verse 14. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. 
See, Jesus is saying, I am the good shepherd. Jesus points out here that he lays down his life for his sheep. See, he's willing to die for his sheep. As a matter of fact, he died for his sheep. He died for you. He died for me up on the cross. He laid his life down. He says here, no one takes it away from me, but I have the power and authority to lay it down and to what? To pick it up back again. Thank you, Jesus. He died for your sins so that you may have life and life more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus. He is the good shepherd. See, even though the thief comes, Jesus is the good shepherd. There is, uh, uh, he protects you. He saves you. All right? He came that you may have life and life more abundantly. The thief comes to destroy, but Jesus came to give you life back. Mmm, thank you, Jesus. See, those drug addictions, the, 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 the chains that, that are on you, the depression, the, the things that you're going through, whatever problems you have, the thief came to destroy you, but Jesus comes that you may have life in life more abundantly. He came to destroy those things that the devil was causing you to come. So, so Jesus says, come back to him. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. He is the good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Jesus points out he lays down his life. See, and he said here, there is other sheep that are not of my own, right? But he says, we're going to gather them up that I may be their shepherd. Who are those people? Those are the ones that are not saved. If you are not saved, if you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are part of that other flock. And he's saying today he wants to be your shepherd. He wants to save you. He wants to protect you. See, we don't have to be afraid of the wolf. <laughs> You just have to know that there's a wolf, but you don't have to be afraid of the wolf because Jesus has all power and authority over the wolf, over the thief. Amen. See, watch this. Watch this. Hmm. See, when Jesus died on the cross, when Jesus was up on the cross, when he died up on the cross, the thief, the wolf, the devil thought that he had won. He said, the shepherd is dead. Now I can devour the flock. All the disciples, the flock, spread out. They ran. They hid. They isolated themselves away. See, the devil thought he had won. The wolf thought he had the sheep already. He said, oh, the shepherd is dead. Now I can devour the sheep. But see, he didn't know something. Jesus was rising up again. Jesus did not die. He died, but he rose again. He did not stay dead. He rose back up. He lays down his life. He has the power and authority to take up his life. And he came back. And he gathered his flock again. Amen. He told his disciples, go and meet me. Come here. He gathered them up again. The disciples were scattered. The devil thought he had won. See, the devil thought he had your life. But Jesus said, nah, -uh, not so. I am, I, I rose that you may have life. I didn't stay on the ground. I didn't want you to die with me on the ground. I died so you wouldn't die. I died so you would rise and have life and life more abundantly. He is the good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Not only did he gather his flock, 
Not only did he gather his flock, but watch what he did. Okay? If you go to Acts 1 and, and you begin to, to read Acts, when Jesus gathered them, he gave them his Holy Spirit. He said, I'm not going to be there in the flesh no more, but I'm sending you my Spirit. I am giving you authority and power over the wolf. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you heard that. I am giving you power and authority over that addiction, over whatever's depressed, over everything that's holding you down in your life. See, the devil thought he had you, but Jesus is breaking that stuff. Somebody is getting set free right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't care what you're going through. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Now, check this out. Do you hear him calling? The shepherd is calling you right now. He is calling you. He wants you to rise up. The shepherd is calling you by name. He is calling you. He is calling you, young lady. He is calling you, young man. He is calling you. The shepherd is calling you. Are you part of his sheep? Do you hear his voice? The shepherd is calling you. He is calling you. Will you be, will you let him be your shepherd in your life? That's what he's saying. Will you let him be your shepherd? He is calling you. Listen, if you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, do it right now. He wants to be your shepherd. He wants to set you free from all the bondages, from the traps of the wolf, from the thief. The thief thought he had stolen you, but Jesus said, not so, he belongs to me. She belongs to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He is calling you right now. Will you answer the call? Will you be the sheep, his flock? Will you be part of his flock? He is the good shepherd. He lays down his life for you. Thank you, Lord. If that is you, I want you to pray with me. I hope this message blessed you. I hope this encouraged you. And once again, we'll have uh, 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 the website link down here and share this with somebody. Somebody needs to be set free. Amen. But if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he died on the cross for your sins, that you wouldn't take the punishment. But Jesus said, I'll take his punishment. I'll die on the cross so that he may go to heaven or that she may go to heaven. Amen. If that's you, I want you to repeat after me. Let us pray. Dear God, forgive me of my sins, Lord God. I want you to be my good shepherd, Lord God. I want to be part of your flock, Lord God. I want to enter into the kingdom, Lord God. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of, my, of all my wrongdoings, Lord God. I know that you died on the cross to save me, Lord God. You took the punishment so that I may be free, Lord God. And so right now, I thank you, Lord God. And I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior, Lord God. Come into my heart, come into my life, and change me in your precious name. We thank you, Lord God. And Lord, I just want to pray for everybody that's watching this, everybody that's going through this. Lord God, give them strength, Lord God. Mm, give them strength, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your strength. Your shepherd has given you strength. Yes, God. We thank you for that, Lord God. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our children, Lord God. Protect them from the wolf, Lord Jesus. Send your mighty angels and army to protect our, our children, Lord God, the next generation, Lord God, to and rise them up that they may be your voice. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you, guys. Get into your word. Get closer to God. Share this. By sharing this, you're sharing God's message. God bless you. Have a great day. Until next one. God bless.